SMSU opens September 2nd. 1989 will be remembered as the year football arrived in the Ozarks. In its brief Division I AA football history, the Bears had been on the verge of greatness, but in 1989, they broke through, tying a 49-year-old school record for most wins in a single season and reaching postseason playoff competition for the first time ever. Airball was a big hit at Briggs Stadium. 1989 would see the Bears set school records for the longest running play ever, the longest pass play ever, and single season team records for rushing, passing, total offense, and attendance. Briggs Stadium was the place to be on six fall Saturdays. The hard work of four years paid off for the 1989 football Bears. Four springs of preseason work and four Augusts of grueling drills received their reward in the form of a Gateway Conference Championship and a berth in the NCAA playoffs. The Bears played a game in December in the Piney Woods of East Texas against Stephen F. Austin. With Gateway Conference Offensive Player of the Year, quarterback DeAndre Smith, having undergone arthroscopic knee surgery just six days before the game, the Bears were somewhat hobbled offensively. But not enough to keep them from scoring three touchdowns, including one on a school record 92-yard pass play from Smith to Rodney McConico. The road ended in Nacogdoches. But the action along the way left a season of beautiful memories. The fun started early for the Bears, who began showing immediately that air ball was more than just a slogan. The ever dangerous Philip Collins started the first touchdown drive of the season, and newcomer Eric Jenkins made his presence known immediately at fullback and as a receiver. Junior quarterback DeAndre Smith scored the first of what would be 15 touchdowns on the season to give the Bears a 7-3 lead over nationally ranked Northwest Louisiana. Sophomore safety Marcus Schiff intercepted the first of five passes that he would snatch on the season, and the Bears soon were charging back upfield. Jenkins rumbling for 20 yards to set up the field goal that would make Chris Pottis the school's all-time leader in that department. Yard attempt. There's the snap, the ball is down, the kick is on his way, and there is the record center right there, it is good. 29-yard field goal by Chris Pottis, and the Bears take a 10 degree lead. Still, it was 10-10 in the third quarter, and the Demons were driving. The defense rose up, forced a long field goal try that was wide. DeAndre made the key play on the game-winning touchdown drive, and Rodney McConaughey went over for the tiebreaker. The Bears added a late field goal, and it got their season of destiny off to a rousing start. State picked second in the Gateway Conference behind SMSU. The Sycamores got off to a 3-0 lead on a 47-yard field goal, but soon the Bears left them in the dust. Smith hit Bobby Eaton, moved his senior year from defense to wide receiver on a 37-yard strike. Indiana State's highly touted quarterback John Somm was pressured by the Bears' pass rush all night. And early in the second quarter, the first big touchdown bomb of the season to Doug Adams put SNSU in front to stay. The Bears continued to play good pass defense. Saab would complete only 10 of 28 passes. The game breaker came soon afterwards, SNS going for it on fourth and one. Sophomore Mark Rohr got some early action at quarterback and had his team in the end zone in three plays. And when Indiana State's reserve, Todd Yoakum, fumbled at the Bears' one-yard line with seconds to go in the half, SMSU's 24-3 lead was insurmountable for the Sycamores. Saab returned in the second half, but even his completions exacted a heavy toll. Collins 
concluded the Bears scoring early in the fourth quarter as SMSU had gone 2-0 to start the season, beating Indiana State 31-10. was at Western Illinois against the only team Jess Branch hadn't beaten in his first three years. DeAndre Smith took early action to halt that streak, going 31 yards for a score on the Bears' first possession. And on their second possession, he did it again. Western would be a stubborn opponent, though, going to the air to set up a late first quarter touchdown, then adding a game-tying score in the second period. The difference in the first half was a fourth down gamble for the Bears at their own 39, in which the Leathernecks jumped offside. That eventually led to a field goal. Early in the second half, Western threatened to take the lead after an interception, but the defense stuffed them and forced a game-tying field goal for a 17-all score. Still, the defending champion Leathernecks had the momentum, and SMS backed up to its own one-yard line when a gutsy call put an entry in the record books. Expecting a plunge into the line. Smith runs the option. Pitches! It goes wide down the far sidelines. It's the five, the 30, the 40, into Western Territory, and he's going to go. It's going to be a touchdown, a 99-yard run for the Bears. Philip Collins! Philip Collins! And After only the seventh 99-yard run from scrimmage in NCAA history, finish. Western should have been down for the count, but they came back with a game-time touchdown pass in the fourth quarter, and they were at the Bears 41 on their next possession when the defense provided the clincher. Michael Fox punching the ball loose, and linebacker Sean Richardson taking it 63 yards for the decisive touchdown. Michael Bates and the defense continued to hold Western at bay as the Bears scored a confidence-building 31-24 road win. <laughs> the only cool night of the season and the sparsest crowd gathered in Clarksville, Tennessee, where the Bears started their fourth fullback in as many games. Tony Tabor, who would play most of the year at defensive tackle, had a 60-yard rushing night, and Collins got his team on the board early against Austin P. On the next SMS possession, same result, 80 yards in seven plays, DeAndre covering the last 23 himself. The defense held the Governors to just 182 yards total on the night and forced four turnovers. Quarterback Kerry Severson retired after being sacked for the third time, but at only 14-3 in the third quarter, DeAndre had some unfinished business to transact. His 20-yard run set up Collins' touchdown, and then all doubt was ended with one of the most sensational plays of the season. The master of the last second pitch, Smith and senior Tony Gilbert combined on a 69-yard play to make it 28-3. The aerial game was back full force early in the fourth quarter. Smith and Gilbert hooking up again, this time for 28 yards. And Ken Kelly, coming off an injury, caught the touchdown pass. Redshirt freshman fullback Jonah White completed the 41-3 route, in which the Bears racked up 552 yards of total offense. Things figured to be more difficult against perennial power Northern Iowa, but Marcus Schiff got things sailing in the right direction early. On second down, Macklin back to pass, sets up, throws, intercepted, and here goes Marcus Schiff. Goodbye. He took it at his own 30. He's to the opposite 30. defense was all over Northern Iowa's running game, but the Panthers were still threatening to tie the score when the team's leading tackler, James Turnick, recovered a fumble at the SNS 20-yard line. That set the stage for an 80-yard march, capped by Smith's 29-yard touchdown pass to Gilbert, and the fumble had resulted in a possible 14-point swing. 
Before the half was out, the defense had put more daylight between the two teams. Sophomore Bill Walter returning a tip pass for a touchdown. One of five the defense would score on the season. It was 21-7 late in the third quarter when Ship did it again. His fifth interception in five games. And the Spider-Man made a good return. Smith darted up the middle to set up a short touchdown run by Gilbert. And after a Northern Iowa score, the Bears came back with another of their own. Gilbert would finish his SMSU career tied for fifth in pass receptions and ninth in career rushing. Smith scored the touchdown himself, and Fox kept the heat off Northern Iowa's Ken Macklin all the way to the dressing room. 37-22 the final, and the Bears were 5-0. Homecoming 1989 and the Smith to Gilbert combination made Illinois State Redbirds an endangered species. DeAndre's touchdown keeper was the only other play of the 41-yard drive that took 26 seconds. The Bears gambled more on both offense and defense in 1989 and guessed right far more often than not. You could hardly go wrong with the offense, which drove 87 yards on its third possession of the game. DeAndre getting the team within striking distance and then finishing the assault himself for a 14-0 lead. The only way things would get better for Illinois State was when they got on the bus to go home. Turnage blocked the punt later in the first half, and Kyle Anthony returned it for an SMS touchdown. Sophomore reserve Paul Connie saw extensive action at quarterback in the homecoming game and found Collins down the middle for 20 yards. The Osceola Missouri product scored the touchdown on a keeper, and the defense preserved the 28-0 halftime lead. This was a track meet for Bears quarterbacks. In the third quarter, DeAndre added to the destruction. The hole is not really, it's there, but he creates it with that burst of speed and simply outruns the safety. The safety catches him at the goal line, but all for not. 37 yards and now a 34-0 lead. And Pottis adds the extra point, and DeAndre Smith is over 100 yards rushing again. 119. John Liston wasn't fooled by Redbird trickery, staying home to preserve the shutout well into the fourth quarter. And Carney proved his breakaway ability. From the 15, Carney runs the option to the short side. He's First gone. Down. Goodbye. If he can outrun him, and he has some blockers. A 42-7 homecoming victory propelled the Bears to 6-0 and a number four national ranking in Division I AA. A hot day in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the Bears' twilight date with Western Kentucky, a 1988 playoff quarterfinalist. Gilbert set up a short, hottest field goal with his 26-yard run. And when the Hilltoppers threatened to go in front, Carl Anthony stuck their tailback, Don Smith, and Derek Jackson recovered the fumble. From their own four-yard line, here came the Bears. Gilbert scored two plays later, and it was 10-0. In the second quarter, Sean Richardson came up with his second interception of the season, and DeAndre's pass to Collins, good for 35 yards and a touchdown, gave the Bears a 17-0 lead over a quality opponent on the road. But Western Kentucky returned the ensuing kickoff 96 yards for a touchdown, and Don Smith, who would carry 41 times for 233 yards in this game, made it 17-14. Still, things appeared well in hand when Fox recovered another Western fumble, this one forced by Michael Bates. But suddenly, Don Smith was unstoppable. Eight points down, DeAndre rallied the troops, picking up a crucial 11 yards on third and nine to sustain the drive. And then finding Gilbert on a big play inside the five. 
Collins scored from four yards out, but a two-point conversion try failed, and so did an onside kick. Western Kentucky had outscored the Bears 42 to 33. The following week in Carbondale, Illinois, the Bears were determined to take no prisoners. Doug Adams got behind the coverage for an early big play, setting up Jenkins from two yards away as the big fullback returned to full-scale duty after an injury. SIU's quarterback Scott Gabbard had been on a record-setting pace, but like others before him, he was neutralized for the pass rush, Earl Fowler with a sack. Gilbert then added to his big play credentials on his way to setting the school's single season record with 9.8 yards per carry. Hottest 32 yard field goal offset one by the Salukis and it was 17 to three at the half. Gabbert's day got worse in the third quarter. A completed pass resulting in a turnover. Bill Walter on the recovery. Two plays later, another near home run by a familiar combination. Down and DeAndre sprints to his left, looks downfield, throws, there's Gilbert at the 35. He's running in the clear at the 30, one man to beat, and he's dragged down at the SIU 22 yard McConico line. McConaughey scored the Tony touchdown Gilbert, and gave the Bears a 24 to 3 lead. Gabbert's day ended with his next pass, picked off by Carl Anthony, the transfer from Blinn Junior College in Texas. But Gabbard's misfortune was a turning point as he gave way to the previous year's SIU starter, Fred Gibson, who passed the Salukis back into the game. In the final minute, they were driving again towards a possible game-winning score when on third down, Anthony's interception sealed the win and clinched no worse than a gateway co-championship for the 7-1 Bears. Parents weekend at SMSU and the folks were going to see an incredible game. Alcorn State started badly. Walter partially blocking the punt. DeAndre took advantage in only four plays, going the last 28 himself in route to a team-leading 909-yard rushing season. Best ever by an SMSU quarterback and sixth best single-season rushing total by anyone in Bears history. After an Alcorn State touchdown, SMS quickly responded, Gilbert scoring on an exciting 39-yard run. Then it was Bill Collins' turn before the first quarter had ended. And the Bears led the team from Mississippi 21 to 3. Alcorn State's problems in the kicking game intensified. They blocked their own punt, and Pottis kicked a field goal on the first play of the second quarter. Less than two minutes later, both teams had scored touchdowns. The Bears' dynamic duo picked up most of the yardage. DeAndre flips on the play, back to throw, goes long over the middle, Tony Gilbert free makes it. Transfer Hale Hitchcock ripped off the final 16 yards, and a two-point conversion made it 32 to 13. It remained that way to halftime, listing with an interception to keep the Braves at bay, and Turnage knocking out Alcorn's quarterback, Air McNair. Collins would lead the team in receiving with 34 catches, the most since Lynn May set the school record in 1982. He couldn't have been more open early in the second half against Alcorn, and DeAndre laid it in for a 38-13 lead. Gilbert had a terrific game, 121 yards rushing, 108 on kickoff returns, and 72 through the air for 301 all-purpose yards. His 62-yard burst down the sidelines got the Bears out of a deep hole. And Smith's subsequent pass to McConaughey set up yet another touchdown. Jonah White concluded the scoring with a 37-yard dash up the middle. And the Bears had their biggest offensive output of the year, 630 total yards.
Elway looking in. Elway looking in, Rodney. Two weeks passed before the Bears ventured to Eastern Illinois. By then, the sole championship of the Gateway was secured. Eastern broke on top early, but when they tried for more, kick rush specialist Anthony got a piece of a field goal attempt. Rodney McConico put great effort into his 17-yard run. But soon the Panthers were threatening again when Walter and Fox came through with a sack on third and goal, Eastern at the SMS two-yard line. The Panthers then missed a chip shot field goal. Back came the Bears with Smith delivering on target to Collins at the one-yard line and sneaking in for the score on the next play. The Panthers sustained a march with the second-half kickoff and reached the SMS three-yard line where they were turned aside again. Once more, Ray Delisio had a field goal blocked and the Bears took over. And they gave up a safety and fell behind 9-7. But before the third quarter was out, Smith had thrown a 33-yard touchdown pass to Bobby Eaton and a two-point conversion strike to Adams. The defense almost made another goal line stand, but not quite. Eric Arnold throwing for a touchdown and a 16-15 Panther lead in the fourth quarter. DeAndre courageously brought the Bears back to try and pull it out. 39 yards to Adams to give him a chance. And then Gilbert swept for a first down at the Eastern 11. But in a game that had seen the Panthers have three field goals blocked, the Bears had it happen to them. With a minute 25 to go, the record went to 8-2 and two as Eastern Illinois prevailed by one. In Lynchburg, Virginia, Jenkins made the big play of an early SMS drive, setting up Collins' three-yard run to tie the score. Liberty had the ball near midfield when linebacker Keith Gatlin recovered Kennard's fumble. The defense was stuffing the flames now, three downs and out. The Bears of 1989 would sometimes use all their allotted four downs, as on a Smith pass to Ken Kelly on fourth and five late in the half. Collins scored his third touchdown of the game on the next play. Two defensive penalties moved Liberty within striking distance in the final seconds of the half. But Craig Phillips stunned 260-pound tight end Eric Green just short of the goal line. The Bears still had a 21-7 lead when heavyweight wrestler Turnage recorded his second quarterback knockout of the season on Liberty's Paul Johnson. Phillips made a diving interception of Johnson's replacement and that set up a 34-yard field goal by the steady Pottis. Bears were in no danger as they whipped the Flames 31-20 to conclude regular season play at 9-2. It was on to the playoffs and a first-round home date with the University of Maine. The Black Bears brought a power football team to Briggs Stadium Thanksgiving weekend, led by the nation's leading rusher on the 1AA level, Carl Smith. SMSU was back on its heels, but not for long. DeAndre found Adams for one of his patented big plays, 44 yards to the main nine. Smith kept for the touchdown. It was main power against SMSU speed and versatility. And DeAndre Smith. He passed to Collins for one key first down and scored the touchdown himself to cap the drive. Still, the Black Bears led at the half, 20 to 14. An effective play for the Bears all year was the shovel pass. And early in the third quarter against Maine, they used it for 15 yards to Collins. Smith danced and darted for 11 yards in the go-ahead touchdown, but left for the game with torn cartilage in his knees. In 32 seconds, Maine was in front again. Big quarterback Mike Buck passing for 33 yards and a score, plus a two-point conversion. But here, the Bears' depth showed. Carney, pressed into service at quarterback, gave to freshman fullback Damon Frost for 22 yards and scored the game-tying touchdown himself. Defensively, SMS was beginning to occasionally find the answer to Carl Smith. And Maine hurt its own cause with a fake punt, completed pass, but the receiver's knee touching a yard shy of a first down. In the final minute of the third quarter, Collins exploded for 24 yards after the fake to backfire. 
and Carney rose to the occasion. Southwest Missouri's starting quarterback, DeAndre Smith, having his right knee wrap, but it hasn't made a difference because Paul Carney has been moving the Bears. Carney with the option, he's going to keep. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Southwest Missouri back on top, 34-28. Oddish with the extra point attack. Snap, the ball is down to Pinkett's perfect. 35-28. But it was far from over. On successive third downs, Carl Smith burned the Bears on draw play. And the second one went 35 yards and a 35 all time. SNS gained one first down, then played field position for one final try. Von Willer's punt hit on the one and backed up rather than carrying into the end zone. That was the break the defense needed. Turning, stopping Smith on third down to force a black bear punt. A minute 28 remains when Carney took possession near midfield in a tied national playoff game. His first play was a tough throw, good for 18 yards to Eden. His second play was a pitch to Collins, whose quickness and moves put the Bears within range of a game-winning field goal. On his 22nd birthday, it came down to Collins for the win. Right-footed soccer Styler from 33 yards down, probably for the win. Snap back, ball down, kick is up, it's low, but it's good! It's good! It's good! The Bears mob Chris Pottis. Happy birthday, Chris. Oh, what an effort.